Before we begin tonight, I'd just like to remember Francis Bernard Larkin, who was who died this past week, and uh, he was a member of the Pennies for Poverty in the report. And he also was the, uh, was the gave tour guides down to the Custom House, and, and he died at a young age. So remember him in our thoughts tonight. And also, you know, the recent violence, and remember the victims in Louisiana, Minnesota, Texas, and today at 2.30 in, in Michigan. So remember them families and the victims, and just remember them in our thoughts and prayers tonight. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America and, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilor Connell. Present. Councilor Cronin. Present. Councilor Devlin. Is absent. Councilor Earls. Is absent. Councilor Agerman. Here. Councilor Junta. Present. Councilor Tonta. Here. Councilor Vogel. Present. Councilor Z. Present. Councilor Cameron. Here. Council President O'Brien. Here. We have a quorum, Mr. President. Thank you. Late file items. There are two late file items. There's a communication 076, which is a Boyd Drive petition you'll see on your desk. And there's also a presentation from the Friends of Middleport Trees. We're considering a late file. That will be Motion it. Motion to waive the rules and accept the late file items. Second. Aye. 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 Opposed? Public comment? gentlemen going to talk to the presentation do you, so you don't have to do with the uh, public comment mr. Taylor and okay. Ms. Miller so we'll do it when you do your presentation so first one is Mark Janos Good evening mr. president members of the council my name is Mark Janos I'm here on behalf of Wolf Tavern LLC doing business as Wolfies uh, the uh, my clients the wolves are here this evening they have filed an application for common victualers license for the purposes of opening up a restaurant at the location formerly known as 10 Center Street. Uh, they have, uh, we're presenting this evening, I hope you all have a copy of a letter I've submitted with respect to uh, an application for two pool tables at that location, uh, which uh, we're filing in conjunction with our uh, application, which we hope will be heard uh, two nights from tonight uh, before the licensing uh, authority. Uh, any questions? Uh, and just a comment in that is that uh, uh, I believed at the time that the entertainment license was one which was typically issued by the local licensing authority. And much to my surprise, together with uh, Mr. Jones's assistance, we discovered that it is the city council who has authority over the issuance of pool tables or the, uh, for those licenses. Uh, and uh, uh, interestingly enough, uh, upon issuance of that license, uh, the uh, applicant is uh, required to pay the sum of $5. So, any questions? More zeros. <laughs> <laughs> a pool table, don't you understand? Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. President, may I, may I make an inquiry? Okay. Thank you. Do, what's your timeline? Um, right now, uh, we're filing for application with the local licensing authority, which uh, we hope will be heard on Wednesday. That's our uh, expectation. Um, after that, uh, it goes before the Alcoholic Beverages Control Commission. Uh, and that is always a black hole. It can be anywhere from two weeks to eight weeks, depending upon how busy they are and what information they require of us. We try to be as thorough as we can, but, uh, and we have contacts down there as well. So I think we're looking at, hopefully, the end of August, if, if, we're, if we can be ambitious. Because our process will be that long as well. I think uh, hopefully we can dovetail if it goes to a committee and we have an opportunity to you know, fully uh, describe what it is we're trying to accomplish, locations and, you know, rules and regulations, which I think we included within our uh, package as well, so. Thank you. Uh, anyway. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. MJ Verdi. Hi, I'm MJ Verdi. I reside at 18 Spring Street. Um, I moved here 
um, I'm, I'm up for a planning board, sorry. I um, moved here about nine years ago with my family. I have children in the school system, and you may have a copy of my resume and letter um, for possible placement. Um, interested in continuing to have the city grow and uh, develop in a positive way, and I hope that I can be a part of that and volunteer my time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Doris, G-O-Y-K-Y-S. Hello, I'm Doris Glickies. I'm at 7 Farrell Street. I recently, on June 28th, I went through the Planning Board of Commissions, and I got um, upsected to do a, a variance and a special conformance to rebuild my home on 7 Farrell Street. And unfortunately, at that same time, the tree and sidewalk uh, ordinance came to light. And um, I spoke to Peter Binet, and he cannot issue permits until I get the sidewalk and the trees um, permitted for. And Wayne Amaral came over to my home and he said I needed at least 80, the, the whole side, like, so be like 80 feet of concrete sidewalk, um, brand new granite curbing, uh, two trees, and that will, you know, affect my driveway, my front, and it will be around $10,000. So I was hoping, you know, that I'm, I'm trying to get this project started. It was going to start last year. And I had some issues with like the architect and the drafter. So now the project wants to start anytime soon in August. And you know, I would like to get the permits to get the house started to build. And I was really hoping that by the time the house is built in January or February, we can get some resolution because it's a lot of money for me to put a sidewalk in my little side street out of Rosen when the majority of my neighborhood, including my neighbors, all have we all have asphalt. And even though it's not in the greatest um, condition, at least it matches all right now. So if I were to put a brand new sidewalk with granite curbing, it's going to look very mismatched with the rest of the neighborhood. Thank you. Ask a question? Yep. So the, uh, when they said it was triggered, why it's, it was triggered based on the value of the project? Yeah, so my house is in really bad condition, so I'm keeping the basement and the foundation to save some money, but I need to rebuild the home. Okay. Mm. Okay. So it's over 50% of the appraised value. Yes, that's thank correct. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. That's it for public comment. Mm. Going to Mayor's comment. First one right there. Mm. Good evening, President O'Brien, members of the City Council. I first would like to invite the Truth Commission up uh, to uh, talk to you for a few minutes. I understand they have a presentation for us. My name is Chris Miller. I'm uh, the chairman of the uh, Tree Commission and a member of the uh, nonprofit uh, Friends of Newburyport Trees. Uh, the city has been awarded the 20th year of uh, City uh, Trees USA, and uh, we have a banner, that we have a plaque, and we have a banner that somebody can put in their office, <laughs> <laughs> or use as a kite, which, whichever <laughs> comes first. Uh, it, there, there, are, there aren't many um, uh, cities who, who have gotten the been involved with this uh, organization for 20 years. Um, Ed Taylor uh, has been a chairman of the Tree Committee and then the Tree Commission and uh, is retiring um, to, to move on and do bigger and better things. And he's going to speak a, a few minutes because he has been involved uh, so long with the, uh, the Arbor Day Foundation. Thank you, Mayor Holiday, and everyone for listening. I promised Tom that I would get this over with in three minutes, so let's see how we do. I handed out my notes to everyone, and if it were a PowerPoint presentation, we'd go down it line by line in the traditional boring fashion, but basically the first part is what the Tree Commission does, which is it plans, identifies, selects, oversees, obtains grants, educates, advises, and liaisons with other entities uh, and departments and commissions. 
Uh, the Tree City USA is a national organization that's headquartered out west. And uh, honestly, when I first ran into it, I had no idea exactly why this was useful or important. But cities all across the state would go through the application process every year and get their uh, certification. But over time, I began to see that there are some hidden benefits to it. Now, if you become a member, they send you five or ten little tiny trees, and about half the people I talked to who got those trees had them die. And I've also met people who have full-size trees in their yards that came from things that were about six inches tall. So they do that for their membership drive, but for people like us, uh, they offer a, an overriding uh, reminder of what we need to be thinking about during the year in order to have a good, healthy tree stewardship program in, for the city. And uh, it provides that ongoing reminder about the details of tree care. The certification offers also uh, increased credibility for getting grants, and in particular grants that are administered through the Department of Conservation and Recreation and they have one small part of their organization, a state organization, uh, that focuses on urban forests, and they administer federal and some state grants, and we've availed ourselves of some of those, and uh, it also uh, provides uh, a yearly meeting to hand out the awards to everybody who got the certification, and it turns out to be a fantastic networking opportunity to meet everybody else, both volunteers, and people in city governments who are involved in tree care. And you can find out what they're doing and get their names and numbers and call them up. And basically, it is terrific. They also provide, during this uh, day-long conference, the second half is information. And one of the more interesting things that I thought was not going to be interesting that they provided one year was on wastewater management. I thought, boy, there's well, a dry issue. But it turned out to be a fantastically interesting issue and complicated. Um, they also provide a specialized training like that, and the, uh, uh, it's possible because we know that people at the DCR so well through this program, we're able to call them up and get guidance about what, what else is happening. So overall, it's been a terrific uh, program, and uh, I'm glad that we're able to keep it up year after year. Anyone have any questions about all that? Well, it's been my pleasure to be involved in this, and I'm going to be retiring uh, this semester and uh, taking over the uh, country bluegrass jam session here in Newburyport, and so I'm going from trees to music, which is not a bad <laughs> transition. Well, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And before you disappear. Uh, I have the pleasure of presenting you with the Certificate of Accommodation, which is hereby awarded to Ed Taylor. It is my honor as the Mayor of the City of Newburyport to extend to you our best wishes and sincere appreciation for your 14 years of dedication and commitment to the Newburyport Tree Commission, given under my hand and seal this 11th day of July in the year 2016. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ed. Vain enough to be absolutely thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's well deserved. I can't thank you enough for all the work that you've done Thanks. for the trees in our city. It's so important. Obviously, we get 20 years of an award. So I've asked if you could just hold on for a minute till I finish my update, and then we'll go take another picture. Okay, great. If, that would, if you would be so kind. Thank you. Thank you. Don't hit the award. <laughs> Okay, uh, a few other updates. Uh, as you know, uh, the morning after our last meeting, we had a horrific fire in our city, uh, which uh, was a total loss for Abraham, Abraham's Bagels and also impacted most of, if not all, the residents on East Row. Uh, we are fortunate that the fire and police department uh, their response with the aid of mutual aid partners were able to contain the fire and reports at this point indicate that the, uh, structurally the building is salvageable. But what is really significant about an issue like this that happens in our city is the outpouring of support that has come from across our community. Business owners impacted <coughs> as well as other business owners, the chamber, uh, city staff, firehouse staff, we all came together within 24 hours of this incident and have begun organizing a benef benefit called Fire Up Newburyport. So on Wednesday, 
July uh, 20th. The firehouse will open its doors at 5 p.m. There will be four bands playing. Um, it starts with Lux, then Cup of Joe, Henry Welsh Band, and Liz Frame Kickers. Uh, you'll get a 20, it's a $25 suggested donation. You get a wristband, you can walk in and out. Then we have many, many retailers and many, many restaurateurs in uh, Newburyport who are all donating a percentage of their profits uh, on the 20th to help the employees and the business owners who were impacted by the fire. So there'll be more information that will be posted shortly, but I encourage you all um, to participate in this event to help support the businesses that were impacted. On uh, June 29th, Chief LeClaire, who is also our Emergency Management Director, led our annual summer exercise with police, fire, EMS, Anna Jake's Hospital, Health Department, Harbor Master, uh, Coast Guard, uh, Mayor and staff, and walked us through a potential scenario uh, that could happen during a festival. And uh, this is a three-hour exercise that we've done every year for the past five years, and it brings all uh, public safety and emergency personnel together, and it's really very, very beneficial. A couple parks update. Uh, we met with Berkeley team last week to review plans for the start of construction of the public bathrooms down at Cashman, which you know is part of their uh, mitigation for the uh, townhouse project but below, um, behind the toll building. Um, we have a couple of CONCOM issues to work out, but we anticipate that construction to be starting shortly, and uh, we'll certainly keep you updated and have talked very carefully with the construction team about the fact that this is a high-use playground, code of conduct for all the construction workers and keeping people within uh, confined areas. So there'll be more information when that actually is starting. Uh, today I signed a notice to proceed uh, for, this is something we absolutely have to do at the stadium project. The, the netting was too short and too small and so it is going to be expanded to fit the length of the turf field as well as raise the height. We've had lots of problems with soccer balls and the cross balls straying into homeowners homes um, uh, as a result of not having sufficient netting there. So we hope to have that completed by the end of August. Would also like to congratulate the Parks Department, commissioners, and volunteers who um, had a wonderful con concert, the American Rhythm and Roots Festival. Hopefully it will be the first of many uh, during fourth, uh, um, July 4th weekend. And it was a picture perfect weekend. The weather was great, the music was wonderful, and I know they made some money, which is what's most important. Uh, Whittier Bridge Project, we met on site with the Walsh McCorse staff to, we're beginning to finalize our mitigation with uh, Walsh McCourt. That includes the shared use path, the paraglass, that included the expanded wall on the uh, 95 north side. Uh, we're working on additional mitigation for the Pine Hill neighbors in terms of landscaping. Uh, some paving and some other uh, list of mitigation as a result of Walsh Court using city property for staging during the project. Once we finalize that list, I will certainly share that with you. Uh, also, uh, last week, I had the opportunity to invite the staff from MIT, Dr. Alex uh, Slocum, and two doctoral students, David Taylor and Kevin Simons, who came out because they had been working for um, about a year with uh, Jamie Tuccolo, our, our superintendent of collections, on how to keep water out of the vacuum pits in the air vac system out on Plum Island. We have four to five pilots going that have been working, and uh, very excited about that. Hope to continue this dialogue with members from uh, MIT, but I'm very grateful for their volunteer hours that they gave us. Um, intermodal facility, we had our second intermodal advisory group meeting on June 28th, which was very productive. Uh, we are pushing the design team because we are not satisfied yet with uh, what they have given us for the facade and uh, windows, if you will. Uh, also with the discussion with the uh, group have decided that it makes more sense to move the stairway on the corner of Merrimack and Titcomb to the corner of Titcomb and Prospect. And so we're asking the design team um, to make that happen. We will uh, be releasing uh, the design at, when it hits 30%, which should be hopefully in the next three to four weeks. Uh, Route 1 traffic circle and pedestrian crossing, we have a meeting with uh, MassDOT this week where we are hoping to get their input and support in, so we can apply for our next round of the MassWorks grant 
and focus on that area of the city in terms of that p pedestrian crossing. We were also invited to participate in a pilot which is uh, a health assessment and mapping of traffic areas around the traffic circle with the Metropolitan Planning Commission, the State Department of Public Health, the Merrimack Valley Planning Commission, where we looked at different scenarios in terms of reworking the traffic circle and what would be the health impact to our community. Very different type of an approach that's added now in terms of redesign. Uh, on the business park, uh, on 714, members of the Resiliency Ad Hoc Group uh, Planning Office and my office will be meeting with businesses down there to uh, take another look at what's happening in terms of flooding issues. Uh, road and sidewalk work is um, beginning. Um, I do apologize to the residents on the other side of Hale Street who tried to get through. There wasn't good signage. Talk to DPS today. They will be better signage. Uh, they are prepping Charles Street in winter and um, they will be starting on Green Street probably tomorrow in terms of prepping that for work here. The um, businesses and residents all along Green Street have been notified and we will continue to make sure we get updates on the website also. And I would also like to thank Kate Newell-Smith, our senior planner, who had a very, very productive uh, regrouping of the steering committee for the master plan. Uh, we are really finally moved, this is coming together, uh, and uh, each of us have assignments to complete, and we hope to begin rolling this out in its final draft form to the city council, to the planning board, and to the community in September. So thank you. Thank you. Move on consent agenda. Our consent agenda consists of the approval of the minutes for the June 27th meeting. There are no transfers. There are six communications. First communication number 70 is from When Pigs Fly, new business at 1 Merrimack Street. They have a table request to go to license and permits. Next is communication 71, Geiger Walk Against Violence to be held October 2nd, 2016, <coughs> public safety. Next is a Marlboro Street block party, August 27th, license and permits. The pool table application we heard about before, Wolf Tavern, 10th Center Street, to go to license and permits. Pan Mass Challenge Kids Race, September 18, 2016, to go to public safety. And the 54th Street on the Island block party, August 13th, uh, 2016, to go to license and permits. There are two appointments. First appointment is number 55, Patricia A. Moore, new report to be Chief Procurement Officer. Next is appointment 56, MJ Verde, 18 Spring Street, new report to the Planning Board until August 1st, 2021. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move on to <coughs> regular agenda. Right? First one is transfers. First transfer uh, has an emergency preamble with it. Uh, it's pursuant to uh, Chapter 29B of the Charter in Section 177. An emergency exists because FICA payroll taxes are due and the allowable time for transfers ends July 15, 2016. Submitted Councilor Charles Tontar. Motion to approve. Second. Second. In discussion? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Transfer 22. Transfer itself is from uh, the Human Resources Director, Insurance Health, 3,250. Transfer to FICA payroll taxes, same amount. Motion, Motion to approve. approve. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yeah, communication 76. Lay file, uh, that's a petition uh, from Boyd Drive that has uh, two pages of uh, residents. They, uh, would you like me to read it, Mr. President? Yes, please. Thank you. The undersigned residents of Boyd Drive have concerns regarding the public health and safety of our community. A letter of intent for an OSRD special permit for the current location of the Evergreen Golf Course located at 18 Boyd Drive will be provided to the Planning Board in the coming months. Past leaders of our community are well documented in the original planning of the development with regard to their safety and health concerns and took precautions to ensure our well-being. We ask that your office along with the planning board, water and sewer commissioners, fire department review in depth our three top concerns. One, contamination of well number two, 
affecting 20% of the public water supply and approximately 4,000 residents. Two, flooding up the proposed 39 new houses and those at the bottom of Boyd Drive from the seasonal high groundwater, which is likely to increase at a, as a result of the development of the 36 plus acre parcel, leaving 40 plus families at risk. And three, public safety in times of medical or fire emergencies with only one egress for the largest R1 developed area in the city, affecting 55 plus houses and putting more than 150 residents at risk. Motion to refer to license and permit. Second. Planning and development. I'm sorry, planning and development. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Move on to orders. Order, the first order is order number 57 of the year. It's chapter 13, traffic section 13-180, resident parking. It actually adds Orange Street to that resident parking program. Submitted, Councilor Jared Eigen. Motion to refer to public safety. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Both. Going to ordinances. It's an ordinance number 13, chapter 12, streets and sidewalks, section 12-1, obstructing streets and sidewalks generally. <clears throat> In essence, it is amending the food service establishments on the public rights of way. Uh, in pertinent part, initial permit may be issued for one year. Renewal permits, if there are no material changes, may be issued for a period of two years. If there are material changes, may be issued for a period of one year. Submitted, Councilors Zied and Cronin. Motion to refer to license and permits. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Move on to committee items. Budget finance. Uh, motion to remove transfer 21. Uh, transfer Parks Department uh, maintenance to uh, for uh, Parks Manager and Parks Seasonal Employees. Second. $3,500. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Both? Go ahead. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? I would, uh, I would just say that um, we, the, under Chapter 33B, state law, the transfers are allowable in the, uh, between, uh, within this, uh, the categories in the department uh, in the first 15 days past the uh, fiscal year. So it's perfectly acceptable and needed. It was a 3-0 vote in committee. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Good. Uh, motion to remove uh, communication 65. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion to receive and file. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Next. Motion to remove transfer 21. Second. Uh, acceptance with gratitude of a gift uh, for the downtown New Report Enhancement Team, the amount of $900 for the in street uh, fund. Do you mean Order 54? Do you mean Order 54? That's an ordinance. Order, Oops. Order. Order, 54. Order, 54. Order 54. Order 54. I am, I see it. Car 54. What did it Page drop down there. Oh. <coughs> Second. Thank you. There was no. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's it, Mr. President. That's it. Join Ed? Uh, nothing to report, sir. License and permits? Um, motion to remove communications. Um, 666, 676, and 686. Motion to remove them collectively. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, motion to approve collectively. Second. Second. Thank you. Go ahead, discuss it. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the committee, um, with great awareness, um, approved these unanimously. No discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Anything else? No, thank you. 
Neighborhood and city services. Nothing at this time. Planning and development. Nothing to report. Public safety. Yes, Mr. President. Motion to remove order number 51, Crow Lane, no parking. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. Mo motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion? Council Junta. Uh, the need for, for this order came from um, using the field at Woodman Park more. Um, when the parking lot fills up, people have been um, parking on both sides of Crow Lane. There's one particular house that cannot get out of her driveway when folks do this. So what we're going to do is on both sides of the street, right by the park, we're going to post signs that says no parking um, during athletic events. So it should remedy that situation, and then folks will be parking up the street in front of my house, yeah. which is perfectly acceptable Perfect. to yep. me. It's wider up there. It's OK. <laughs> right. Does your wife know about this yet? <laughs> yeah, not yet. No. Could you have your kids put a lemonade stand? What's that? Put a lemonade stand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, You've got to be idea. paying for college pretty soon. You might as well get started. Right? All in yeah, favor? Absolutely. Aye. 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 Why don't you make a coffee? Aye. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else? Yes, motion to remove order 52, uh, Kent Street stop sign. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Go ahead. Motion to approve? Second. Second. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this just better defines a uh, intersection that we have um, addressed a little bit in the past. This is maybe the final component. We've tried to push traffic back to create better sight distance, and this will better define the intersection of people coming up Kent Street with a stop bar and a stop bar. Uh, um, sign. There have been several uh, crashes at this location. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anything else? Yes, Mr. President. Motion to remove order 56, Goodwin Ave. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. Motion to approve? Second. Second. Discussion? So the need for this one was a resident concern primarily about public safety. Goodwin's Ave is a very narrow street mm -hmm. uh, off of Water Street. Uh, this order creates a no parking zone on, on one side of the street, uh, a short portion from Water Street, just uh, up a little bit uh, to allow for emergency vehicles to be able to make the turn. Street parking will still be allowed further beyond that point as well as on the entire other side of the street. Uh, neighbors are amicable and this is just uh, something to, to help the neighborhood. So appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anything else? That will do it. Public utilities? Nothing coming out, but we have a hearing tomorrow on uh, Ordinance 12. It's from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Just to clarify, because it's about signs that are in the public way. Uh, it doesn't deal with signs on a lot, so on private property, it doesn't affect that. But it's turned out uh, regulating signs in the public way is quite complex, because it it's not only A-frames, it's also um, the signs on State Street that hang over the sidewalk. We have rules for those and so on. So if anyone's interested in the details, uh, you might want to come tomorrow. Thank you. Rules Committee? Yes, Mr. President. Motion to remove um, order number 47. Second. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. 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 Go ahead. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Uh, if I may, uh, this is something that I, th I thought with Councillor Zeed made a lot of sense, and, and he, I think he approached me about it originally. It's something we normally do where, you know, if we're going to sell property, we get an appraisal. Uh, so I thought it was in order to put it as a rule and to give us enough lead time so we don't have to clamor over it. Now, we don't necessarily, it's not saying we have to sell it at the appraised value, but it's a piece of information that as, you know, fiduciaries, we, we should have. So um, I, I hope you support it. If there are any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Next. Yes, motion to remove order 53. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Go ahead. Motion to approve? Second. Discussion? Council seat. So the, 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 just to give the general idea behind this, um, as we know, just historically, we've always had two readings for an ordinance uh, per a recent discovery. We realized we didn't actually have to do that per the city solicitor. The goal behind this is to actually just return us back to what we had been doing. Um, 
I feel personally strongly that there, there is a need to have a first reading, have a time for publication. And as you can see in this one, we're sort of shifting that publication in the 21st century and doing it on the internet, but still the concept is valid. And then to have opportunity for reflection and comment and so forth, and then come to the floor at the next meeting and have a, a second vote uh, before something becomes law. So it's, it's really not meant to be a change, it's essentially to just codify sort of what we were doing and realized, I guess, that technically we didn't have to, but perhaps we should hold ourselves to that standard. Argument? Yeah, I just had one question, and um, I support this, but um, it says held at separate consecutive city council meetings. Um, yeah. I wonder if that's necessary because what if, you know, sometimes things don't make it into the packet and we miss a meeting, we have to vote on it the second time mm -hmm. a month later. So I, I wonder if, if, if you need the word consecutive. I mean, I'd, I'd like to make it, I don't want to, you know, it's up to you. That's one. And we could always suspend the rule. Okay. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. One no? One no. Open passes? Go to the order. <coughs> um, thank you. Um, two very short items. Number one, um, we're going to be doing a meeting in the near future for public safety. Um, on the Green Stride Half Marathon. Um, although we aren't setting the date right now, I know sometimes there's questions with it. So if anybody has any, any questions or comments or concerns, um, you know, get them to me in case you miss the, um, the published date of the public safety meeting, but I'll try to reach out to everybody. And then I just wanna do a, um, a very quick shout, shout out to our uh, local police. Um, over the weekend, I had uh, a license plate stolen off my car, which is no big deal. Um, went into the, to the station, um, handled professionally, it was, it was wonderful. Um, but the interesting thing is that a uh, newly promoted sergeant, um, Greg uh, Whitney, who was also the Ward 3 um, uh, liaison officer, happened to be going through Instagram and saw a picture of my missing license plate <laughs> on Instagram, <laughs> contacted the person, found out where that was, went down there, due to the tide, he could not reach it, found out what the tide was, and went back down there and recovered it during his shift. And I just wanna throw a crudo out to him and the PD for really, you know, um, taking this seriously and going down and returning my plate. So, thank you very much. Thank you. <clears throat> Donta? As uh, you all know, I have been um, selling the concert, the July 4th concert for some time. <laughs> it was held, it was a tremendous uh, success. What I'd like to note, I mean, I certainly didn't have any idea of the amount of, uh, of work involved in, in putting these things together. And, and uh, uh, the number of volunteers who stepped forward uh, to make that concert uh, happen was really gratifying. And it's, it's one of the wonderful things about this city that people are willing to volunteer their time and effort to make uh, these events. I, I heard a number of people um, as I sat at the table, as they were leaving the concert, who said, uh, this is the kind of event that we always used to have in Newburyport. All right, uh, people came, they had they, with picnics and, and sat around and came in and out and it was, uh, th we were lucky with the weather, the music was tremendous and uh, we'll continue to do it. I'd also like to thank the, the, the many um, businesses that contributed to make the event happen, including uh, a well-known coffee house uh, and uh, 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 Revis Realty, and, and there are too many, again, in this community, we have a lot of events where we ask people to, to donate and, uh, and it's tough to keep going back again and again and again and, and ask money, but this is a good cause. It was for the Parks Conservancy and for the Parks and uh, we did end up in the black and so uh, we're gonna be doing it again next year. Thank you. Great, thank you. Councilor Junto. I just wanted to take a minute and talk about um, um, 
the resident that came and talked about Se 7 Farrell Street. Um, just a short time ago, we passed a, a sidewalk and tree ordinance. Um, we talked a lot about the fact that we didn't want the average homeowner to, if you will, get caught in that net. And it was uh, directed at developers that were building million dollar houses but yet not taking care of the property in front of their homes. And so we're, it's in place, you know, the first person that comes to us and says, you know, I live in Newburyport, I, I bought a home and I want to rebuild it. And now they're looking at, from what I heard, replacing 80 feet of sidewalk and installing trees and something to do with curb cuts and redoing a driveway. Well, she had mentioned $10,000, but that certainly doesn't sound like $10,000 work for me. So I guess my thought is, is that collectively we need to think about the ordinance we have on the book. Um, if we are catching the, the, you know, the everyday residents, I, I think we need to make some adjustments to it. So I, I just throw it out there for, things to, for, for folks to think about over the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Point of order, should I, are we allowed to respond? I mean, if you sure. bring something, an issue like that? Or? Well, I, I don't want to get into a whole hour meeting about yeah. sidewalks well, again. I, it's, it's 8.15. I, mean, I don't I, care what time it is. <laughs> you, you can respond, but we're not going to get into a okay. discussion okay. Uh, on this. I, I got you. Well, the first thing that puzzled me is that uh, uh, the homeowner said that she had to pay for the sidewalk now for building permit. That's not what the ordinance says. So I don't understand how that occurred. Uh, nowhere in the ordinance is required for building permit. For example, um, it, would be, it would be typical for a condition of approval to be met at the time of occupancy. So she wouldn't have to do it now. So I don't understand how that occurred. It's not in the ordinance. It's just that's not correct. To give you an example, uh, 77 Lime Street, the mayor uh, had brought to us a, a settlement at $40,000. Um, that payment is not due until certificate of occupancy. So this is weird. I mean, second, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think it's an, aver an average homeowner. I don't think it is. I mean, you're talking about, by her own estimate, she's spending at least $175,000. So it's not. I think the flaw that I agree with, though, is actually requiring concrete. That's the flaw, because there's no concrete around her. That's where I think we should look. Thank you. Anything else? Take a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. moved. Second. In favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Rich.